in the mystery schools, they refer to this mystical time coming out of the age of innocence as the Luciferian philosophy. I've tried to illuminate you with this for years on my radio broadcast. In the Bible, or in the church, they talk about the fall of man. Same thing. There's only one difference between the Luciferian philosophy and the fall of man is that those who talk about the fall of man believe in God whether or not they believe in a savior they believe in God the ones who believe in the Luciferian philosophy do not now here's how that works in the Bible we're told that Eve was tempted by Satan to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God had commanded Adam and Eve not to eat of the fruit of that tree. If you do, ye will surely die. Isn't that the commandment? Lucifer told Eve, God lied to you. He's holding back the fact that you too can become God. But first you have to eat of the fruit of this tree. And if you do, you will surely not die, but shall become as gods. Isn't that true? So, from the religious aspect, we see that as the fall of man, because man disobeyed God. The mysteries, on the other hand, look at this in a different light. Here's their story. It's a metaphor. They don't believe that there ever was a God, or that there ever is a God, aside from man himself. And man has not reached that state yet, but can, this is what they teach in the lodges, that if you perfect yourself as the temple of the God within, and become Christed, we've all heard this in the New Age movement, you too can become God. In her movie, running on the beach, spinning around, I am God. Go ask her early in the morning when she just wakes up and goes and sits in front of the mirror and looks at her aging face and tries to cover it up with makeup if she's God. She may tell you a different story about that time. Around noon, she might be feeling better and become God again. But this is the reality of the human condition. We'd all love to be gods, wouldn't we? My question to Shirley MacLaine at one time was, please, Shirley, could you make me a universe? She sort of looked at me with this hurt look on her face as she confronted her mortality and realized that she was not God because she could not make me a universe. She couldn't even make herself a universe. She can't even make herself look young again. She's having a hard time paying some of her debts. God doesn't have that problem, does he? And in her case, she. <clears throat> Here's the way they look at it. Here's their metaphor. For the end of innocence. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, cruel, and vindictive God. Until Lucifer set man free from this garden by giving him the gift of intellect. Through the use of intellect, Man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God. It's taught in every Masonic temple in this land. Every secret brotherhood, every secret society, every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. They do not believe in Lucifer they do not believe in any entity called a devil, and they do not believe in God. It is a mistake for you to assume that they do. They are atheists in the strictest sense of the word. 
They are humanists. That's their religion. At the highest level, their goal is to create a world in which the adepts, the thousand points of light, working behind the veil to create the culmination of the great plan, can realize the ultimate happiness for mankind. That's why they don't oppose pornography. That's why they don't oppose certain crimes. That's why they say you should not be put in jail for the rest of your life for murder or anything else. There should be no death penalty because it was a learning experience. And having gone through that learning experience, you're a better person now. This is what they teach. Who brought man the gift of fire? Prometheus. Who was Prometheus? Lucifer. What was the gift of fire? Knowledge, intellect. Has it man created industry, culture, society, science from the use of one solitary thing? Fire. Without fire, none of it would have occurred. None of it. Nothing. There would be no society without fire. That's how it's represented in the ancient myths and in the mysteries.